Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and I recently released a video on an HT evaluation day that we had out here in Ventura County, California, where uh, amateur radio operators within the county and a little beyond could bring their radios down and have them put on analyzers and looked at to see, well, you know, are they, uh, you know, meeting the mustard with the FCC regulations as far as emissions. And uh, it was very successful. We did a lot of radios. Um, but now I've been getting emails from people asking me, well, they want to know a little bit more about the system that we were using, that little signal hound system uh, that I was using to run the tests. Uh, so this video is all about that. I'm going to basically show the setup uh, and I'll run a test for you on uh, one of my HTs and you can see how we did it in the software. All right. So with that, uh, hey, don't forget to subscribe. Of course, if I don't ask you to subscribe, my wife won't feed me. Uh, also, if you like this video, click on like, will you? And any of the other videos, if you like them, click on like under that video, okay? So uh, I know that I'm going the right direction with this stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, with that, let's get on with the show. All right, everybody. So I've gotten a lot of requests from the local amateurs out here to show the setup that we were using at uh, the uh, HT Evaluation Day, which is the uh, last video I did, uh, or one of the last videos I did, depending on when I finally get this uh, edited together. Okay, so this is what we have going here. All right. First off, I have a SA44B. This is a single hound. That's the name of the company, Signal Hound uh, Spectrum Analyzer. It goes from 1 hertz to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, here, I have a the TG44A, which is a tracking generator, also made by Signal Hound, goes from 10 hertz to 4.4 gigahertz. Um, we're not going to be, and we didn't, use the tracking generator um, at all, uh, but I do have it set up for completeness because this is kind of the whole test rig that I have, okay? So just to explain some of the cabling, right? Here I have my FT4X, uh, and it is on a piece of coax going right into one side of the straight through of the 40 dB attenuator uh, tap. On the other side, of course, I have a dummy load. And then here, coming out here is a... Uh, a 40 dB attenuation of my transmit power, and that comes around here and goes into the test port of the SA44B. So why do we need to attenuate this? Well, the SA44B does not want anything that is over 20 dB going into it, or it may be damaged. Um, and compound that a little bit, if you're doing the math at home, 20 dB is 100 milliwatts. 100 milliwatts is basically what we used to use as kids for those little um, walkie-talkies we used to get, AM walkie-talkies. Um, all that said, I'm going to be putting out about 30, uh, 37 to 38 uh, uh, oh, uh, dB out of this radio. This brings it down to between minus 2 and minus 3 dB going in here. And I have a range on the uh, signal hound that allows it to uh, be best calibrated for, and I'm doing this from memory, I may be off, but I believe it is minus 30 dB to 10 dB input. And it puts us in a good safe range with this because we're not even coming up uh, over 1 dB. Okay, so it puts us in a really safe range for this, okay? The tracking generator, I, all I have is a dummy load on this. Like I said, we really aren't going to be using it, and we weren't using it during the test. You'll see a piece of coax right here. It comes out, it goes all the way around, and comes in on this side. So that's the tracking portion of the tracking generator. It actually lets the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer know where it's at, and it Spectrum Analyzer then can make a comparison on what the output is going in. 
All right. I hope that all made sense. Um, anyway, and of course, right here, we got a couple USB cables coming out, and those are plugging into my PC that is hooked to all this great camera gear that you see. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and switch our, um, our screen around here so we're actually looking at the software that's doing the test. All right. So let's go ahead and launch Spike. Spike is a software that's used to pull data out of the SA44B. A uh, couple things we got to do right off the bat here. Well, one is make me much, much smaller so you can see the screen. Uh, we're going to go into settings and I need to change my reference level offset. And I'm going to change it to 40 dB. I'm going to say OK. And then I want to set my reference level here. So I shouldn't be with a 5 watt radio. I should never be over 40 dBm. I've got that set. Uh, let's see anything else that I want to change. Uh, we probably want to go logmatic here uh, with our video units and use average. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my analyze, analyze mode. And I am going to select. Let me go ahead and turn persistence off. I'm going to select real, and I want my center frequency to be 146 meg. Now, this is exactly how we were setting this up uh, to test for uh, basic power output and see if it was on frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and key the radio, and I'm going to put a marker. I'm going to do a peak search. And right there, I am at 146, oh, 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 uh, at about oh, 36 to 37 dBm. So I'm in the uh, area that I want to be here for uh, exactly what I'm looking for, about 5 watts of output. Uh, you guys can do the math at home if you want. All right. Now, what we jump to from there is we selected an analysis mode for harmonics. And you see that I only have five listed here. I'm going to change that to seven because that's what we were testing. And now I need to verify, yes, my display reference. I also need to set that to 40 right there. Uh, and that should be fine. So now we're all set to take a look at our harmonic readings. So I'm going to squeeze the key, uh, the pickle here. And it's going to go through and it's going to look at my primary signal and its harmonics. And I'm going to let it settle out a little bit and then I'm going to tell it, all right, so just go ahead and listen to that and you're done. And we can see that I am a good 63 dB uh, below my fundamental. Okay, so now according to the way I interpret the FCC rules, this is a win-win. Okay. You need to read the FTT rules or FCC rules to verify that this is correct and this is where you need to be on your radio. Okay, enough said with that. The other test we did, I'll go over here to analyze mode and I am going to select analog demodulation. Uh, I am going to, I can go ahead and set auto on this. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to spin the dial here. I'm adjusting this and if you can't see uh, uh, the numbers here, you're probably going to want to zoom in a bit. But what I've done here is I've set a top and a bottom to 5.9 kilohertz. And also over here, I happen to have readings on my deviation over there with peak plus and minus for FM. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to key the radio and I'm going to talk into it normally. So I'm talking normally. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the graph right there, the FM time domain, and I actually like that. I happen to understand that at this level of talking, this is totally fine and the radio is fine with that. If I get too close, you notice I'm really binding it up. So I need to make sure that I have the right distance and that's what we were instructing the folks to do. Um, if I'm looking at my plus and minus peaks over here, they pretty much stay around four, four and a half. That's what I want. Anyway, that's that. I'll show you one other thing. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go into menu mode here and I'm going to put a PL tone on this.
There we go. Now, I'm going to be real quiet, and we're going to see the PL tone right down in there. There it is. Operating at about, oh, uh, one kilohertz of deviation. That's pretty good. I like that. That works. If I wanted to get really tricky, I could uh, do a single here. And I could expand this out a little bit to where I think that I can read it a little better. And I got a cross point there and a cross point there. So if I select this right here and uh, let's see, I'll go up. Yes. Where am I at there? Um, I'm, I'm, okay. And I'm looking right here for uh, how many uh, hertz I am. And I'm just kind of moving around to where it looks like I'm in a good spot. And you can see it jumps all over the place a little bit. And I would expect that to be normal. But, you know, that, that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm trying to really get on zero hertz here as close as I can. I'm getting a little closer... You know what, I'll go with that, 6.9, and I'm going to go ahead and lock this as a delta. And then I am going to follow this to the end. We'll try to put a mark there. And, um, yeah, let's see. Try to line it up right there. Get to about the right spot. And that's that's pretty doggone close, actually. Let me come back up here. I'm going to go down a little bit now. I want to come down to where I kind of meet this. What I'm looking for is to get kind of a zero reference, right? So, yeah, that's pretty close. I'm at about 10.5 uh, milliseconds. We'll round that to 10 milliseconds. Uh, 10 milliseconds, uh, how many times does 10 go into 1,000, which would be a second 100 times? I'm supposed to be at 100 hertz on my uh, tone, so that looks pretty good. There you go. Now, again, accuracy on this, eh, you know, you got to work a little bit for it. It is not a $30,000 spectrum analyzer, okay? It's not a $30,000 service station but you know what for the money it's amazing uh, anyway i wanted to show that all to you that was really the only test that we were doing out there and uh you saw it all in action and you saw how the setup worked and you saw the software all right so i hope that answers all your questions and we'll see you real soon well that's it i mean um Got to tell you, the software makes it easy once you figure out the software. Um, and, uh, you know, the most important thing that I'll tell you that you really want to make sure you understand is uh, the math formulas for DBM and DBC and all those other things, okay? Uh, because if you hook something up and it's too hot, uh, as far as running too much power directly into it, uh, you're going to break it. And you don't want to break it, okay? I just, as a little bit of a review, I am very happy with the Signal Helm product. Um, and uh, I have to tell you, based on the price, I'm very, very happy with its performance. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you. And, uh, you know, if you like the video, click like. Any questions uh, about this video or any other video, make them in the comments uh portion of that video and we'll get it all figured out. I usually answer all the questions within a couple, three days. I really try to stay on top of that. And oh, and of course, like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, this is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope to hear you on the air.